What's going on guys? John Alder here from Codemy.com and in this video, we're going to add first name, last name, and email address to our registration for our app with Django and Python. Alright guys, like I said in this video, we're going to add first name, last name, and email address to our registration form. But before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out Codemy.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube one to get $30 off membership with all my courses, videos, and books. One time fee at just $49, which is insanely cheap. Okay, in the last video, we set up this registration form, but when we set it up, it only had a username and a password, and then a password confirmation. Now we want more information than that. We want, for instance, first name, last name, and email address. That's what we're gonna look at in this video. So before we get started, head over to Google, and I just typed in Django Docs user objects, and we get this thing here. It's Here's the URL if you want to look it up directly. And you can see this is the user object. This is basically the thing we set up in the last video. And you'll notice it has username and password, but it also has email, first name, and last name that you can do as well. So we can actually add those fairly easily. We just need to do a little bit of tinkering, and that's what we're going to do in this video. So let's head back over to our code. I'm using the Sublime Text Editor and the Get Bash Terminal as always. And as always, you can find a link to the code in the pinned comment section below, as well as a link to the playlist with all the other Django videos in this series. So before we get started, like I said, we're going to add first name, last name, and email address to our registration form. That's not to be confused with if we head back over to our events folder and our models. Remember, we have this My Club user model, and it has a first name, last name, and email address. That's not what we're going to be dealing with in this video. In this video, we're going to be dealing with adding those things to the user model, and they will be completely separate from this. In the future, we'll tie this My Club user thing back in with the user registration. But for now, we're going to leave this separate. So just sort of put all of this stuff out of your mind for now. We're going to talk about it later. So head back over here. So first name, last name, and email address sort of come built in with the Django system, the authentication system. We just need to tweak some things so that we can actually use them because by default, they don't show up as we learned in the last video. So what I'm going to do is head over to our members folder, right click and create a new file. And let's go file save as, and let's say this has forms.py. And if you look in our events folder, it has a forms.py that we've done some stuff with in the past. So we're doing the same thing basically, but we're doing it now in our members model because this is member registration. So we want to keep it all in the members model. So first thing I'm going to do is head over to my views.py file. And you can see in the last video, we used this user creation form. We need to import that into our forms.py file. So we can do that. We also need to go from Django.contrib.auth dot models, we need to import our user model. That's the model we set up in the last video. And we also need some forms. So let's go from Django import forms. Okay, so now we just need to create a registration form that sort of I don't want to say extends because that's a certain thing in Django, but it adds those other three fields first name, last name and email address to our registration form. So let's create a class. And we can call this anything but I'm going to call it register user form because that's what we're doing. If we look at our views.py file, we created this register user function. So I want to create a register user form of sort of keeping the conventions the same, right? And we want to import that user creation form that we sort of imported, let's see, right up here, right? So, okay, colon. So now we need to sort of say the things we want to add to this thing. So we want email. And that's going to be forms dot email field. Right. And then we want first name. So first underscore name. And that's going to be forms dot this is going to be a car field. I think we've done car field stuff in the past. If we look at our events forms dot pi file, did we text input? No, we didn't. We just used text input. Car field is a character field. It's just a, some, a field of characters, string of text. So, so we're going to do there. We can do a max underscore length here if we want, set that equal to, I don't know, 50 or so. Uh, this is a lowercase l. I know it kind of looks like a capital L. That's just sublime text doing its thing. I'm going to copy all of this because we also need a last underscore name. And I'm just going to paste that in, do the same thing. 50 characters, probably enough for a last name, you think? Maybe 70? 50 is enough, right? I think so. Okay, so that looks good. Now we also need a meta class. So let's go class meta. And people are always asking me, what does meta mean? I, I don't know. It's just a Django thing. 
doesn't mean anything. Don't read into it. It's just what we do, right? So here we need to define the model that we're going to be using. So let's go model equals, and that's user, right? That's what we imported up here. So that makes sense. Now we also need to sort of define all the fields in this form. I know we have three here, but there's more than three because in the last video we set up username, password one, and password two, right? Those are the things that when you go to register, you type your password in the first time, and then you confirm it by typing it a second time, password one, password two, and username. So we need to define those. So let's go fields equals, and this is a tuple, and we just put them all in here. So username, and separate them by comma. And then we have first underscore name, and we have last underscore name, we have email, and then we have password one and password two. Okay, so that's pretty much it for this thing. So now we've got this form created. Now we just need to tell our view, hey, use this form. So I'm gonna copy the name of this guy, head back over to our view in our members directory, right? and come down here to where we registered. And then here where we set the form, instead of using the user creation form, now we're gonna use the register user form. And same thing down here. Okay, so go ahead and save that. That's really all there is to it. Now you're saying, hey, what about that user creation form? We're still importing it up here. Well, when we use the register user form, it inherits user creation form. So we're still using user creation form, we're just inheriting it into this new one that we created adding these three new things to it, and then and going from there. So let's head back over here. I'm in my C my club slash my club website directory, got the virtual environment turned on, and we're running python manage.py run server. So the server's running. Let's head back over here and let's try and register. Uh-oh, register user form is not defined. Ah, we forgot one very important thing. We need to import that into our views.py file. So we're using, where did it go? Register user form in this views.py file, but we need to import it from up here. So let's go from dot forms. We want to import our register user form. Okay, so that looks good. Head back over here, hit reload. Now it should work. Boom. We've got username, first name, last name, email, and password. Now, again, I realize this doesn't look great. They're all kind of, you know, they're not lined up and we probably are gonna to wanna to bootstrapify this at some point, and we will, don't worry, we'll make this look a lot nicer. But for now, let's just go ahead and see if this works. So let's create a new user, we'll call him Tim, and it's gonna be Tim Elder, I don't know, uh, Tim at elder.com, type in a password, type in another password, click submit. Okay, so we seem to be in here, so now let's head over to our admin section and check. Remember, Tim is not an admin, so we need to log back in as an administrative user, now we can go to users and we see there's Tim and you'll notice Tim has a first name and a last name and an email address, whereas Bob from our last video does not. We can still click on Bob and add those things here, right? But, you know, since we created Bob in the last video, he doesn't have those things. So very cool and just that easy. So now let's head back over here and one thing I wanna sort of note, it looks like it would be really easy to add other stuff here, right? So let's say we wanted to add the address of Tim, right? You know, forms.carfield, give it a max underscore length of 200 or something, right? Come down here, add it, right? Save this, head back over to the website. Well, now it won't even let us do it because it's getting errors. And back over here, oh, we misspelled length. <laughs> All right, my bad. L-E-N-G-T-H, save this. Now head back over here. Okay, so now let's log out. Let's try and register Tina, Tina Elder. So let's say Tina at elder.com, give her a password. Let's say 10 West Elm. If we submit this, okay, it looks all right. Now, if we go back to our admin section, try and log in as admin, look at our users, where's Tina? Wait, there she is, where's her address? It's not showing up, right? Not saving it anywhere. That's because this user object in the Django authentication system doesn't have a column to save address. So we can easily, just like we did, 
add another thing here to our form, it's not actually going to save it into the database. So that's kind of a problem. We'll address that in the future videos. Just to give you a hint, what we're going to do is we're going to associate this guy with, let's see, our events models, my club user. And then in here, we can put the address and anything else we want. And then we're going to associate these two models together. But we'll get into all that in future videos. For now, I just want to use the basic stuff that comes with our Django authentication system. And I think we're off to a good start. So now we have username, we have first name, last name, email address. Some people have asked how we can log in using the email address and not a username. I'll probably talk about that in the future, but that is very complicated. You have to do all kinds of custom stuff that we're not really set up for at the moment. And it's really something you want to set up at the beginning of your project. It, if you try and piece it in afterwards, there's all kinds of problems you have to deal with. So maybe we'll do that, or maybe I'll just start up another project and show you how to do it with email address really quickly. I haven't decided yet, but we'll get into all that much later on. But just for everybody that's asked, I will address it at some point, just not right now. So, okay, we're moving right along. We've got a registration here. We've got username, first name, last name, email address, and password, and uh, looking pretty good. So that's all for this video. If you'd like to be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off memberships. So it pays $49 to access all my courses, over 47 courses, hundreds of videos, and the PDFs of all my best-selling coding books. Join over 150,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codemy.com, and I'll see you in the next video.